Hi right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video. I don't know if you can hear me, it's pretty loud. We're here at Mocan Raceway. And uh, I brought the car back, the 240. We're gonna run the 240 tonight, see how she does. Uh, the current state of the car is, it's pretty much 100% back to where it was last year when it ran a 980 at 143. So, uh, you know, fingers crossed. If everything went right tonight, I could run similar times. If nothing went wrong. I have no idea if anything is going to go wrong or go right, but the car is running really, really good on the street. I'm running 20, I uh, will be running 20 PSI if everything goes well. This first pass, I'm probably going to run about 12 PSI. Um, so the big test tonight for this video, uh, for this night at the track, is to see if I can actually launch the car with boost. That was my big problem last time I was here a couple weeks ago. I couldn't build any boost on the line. So I took off the uh, BTR intake and I put on an LS2 intake. Uh, last year I had an LS1 intake. Last year I could build boost on the line no problem uh, with the LS2 intake. With the LS2 intake, I can build boost no problem on the on the foot brake in my testing, you know, back home on the road. So here we are at the track, gonna find out if that still holds true here at the track. So if everything goes well, I'll be able to launch correctly tonight, uh, build some boost on the line, hopefully six to 10 or more PSI, be able to get some solid 60 footers and get some solid ETs. And then if, if that actually happens, then I'll turn the boost up as the night goes on and we'll try to go faster and faster, but you know how this goes, nobody knows what's going to happen. Here we go! Even 10s would be okay today. Right. Good luck, man. Thanks.
definitely the way I wanted to start tonight. So that was on the lowest boost that I can run. As far as duty cycle on my uh, wastegate, that was 20% duty cycle, which is equivalent to just straight up wastegate spring. So we'll pull the logs here and look and see what the boost actually was. Should have been something like 12 or 13, I guess. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look and see. Okay guys, so that was my first pass and I'm back in the pits looking over all the data and everything. So that went super good. I ran a 10.7 at 131 miles per hour. 60 foot was a 1.6. And the 8th mile was a 7.00 um, at 102.97. So um, all those numbers look really good to me. I'm really excited to be back out here in the 10s on a super soft pass. Uh, that pass I left on 9.6 pounds of boost. So that proves that uh, I can launch now, basically. I could, you know, my launch control and launch process is actually working. I have boost on the line. So I think that problem's behind me now, which is awesome. Uh, 60 foot was a 1.6, which is not awesome, but it's not horrible. Like it's good enough. I can go, I can go nines on that. If I, I think I can go nines on that. I've been nines on a 9.5 anyway. So everything looks good to me. Um, <clears throat> air fuel ratios were good. My average boost throughout that pass was about a 13 to 14 psi. So that's good. So running a 10.7 at 13, 14 psi. I'm super encouraged by that because I already know this thing is tuned. I've tuned it up to 20 PSI. So tonight as the night goes on, hopefully I can just turn the boost up a little bit as we go and uh, creep up on that 20 PSI level and uh, just get better and better ETs as the night goes on. Hopefully if everything goes smooth. So that's what happened on the first pass. I'm super pumped. The car is working. Everything feels good. And uh, it should be just the process of turning her up a little bit incrementally as we go throughout the night. Uh, this should be my first actual like successful night at the track where things kind of work the way they're supposed to <sighs> Fingers crossed. Say a prayer for me. All right, let's go back and make another pass with a little bit more boost Okay guys, so we're just uh, after the second pass here. So this is the second pass. It ran a 1080 at 134. Uh, the reason it was slower on time but faster on speed is uh, faster on speed because I have more boost, slower on time because I screwed up the 60 foot. You can see it's only a 1.8 instead of a 1.6 or better. Like it was last time it was a 1.6. So I lost two tenths right there which would have equaled four tenths down here. So that could have been a 10.4 at 134, which would have made a lot of sense. Uh, but I screwed up on the 60 foot. I don't think I screwed up. I just lost traction for whatever reason. They lined me up in the right lane. I hate that when they do that. I don't like the right lane at this track. I've never ever been able to run in the right lane at this track. I always try to run in the left lane, but sometimes they, sometimes they make you go to the right lane. Sometimes they make you go in the right lane regardless of how you're lined up in the in the in the lanes. So anyway, um, I think everything is actually really good and encouraging. Uh, air fuel ratios uh, were pretty much in the mid to low 11s the entire pass uh, for the most part. So that's good enough for me for now. 
uh, manifold air temps right there, MAT, that's how cold my air, you know, that's how well your intercooler is working. Freaking 107, 108, 110, it gets up here at 100 and, at the worst, 119 degrees. That's super, super good. I mean, it's not like world class, but it's it's super, super good enough for what I'm trying to do here. So I'm very, very happy with that on three, five inch thick intercooler, it's doing work. Um, so, uh, boost, uh, okay, so boost up here for the fat part of the run, let's see, let's see what was boost, we hit a peak of 19 pounds, but what was the average throughout all of third gear, average boost throughout all of third gear is right here, 17.6, so I'm going to call that a 17 PSI run, um, which is more or less what I expected out of that increase in duty cycle, I suppose. So that tells me that we can definitely go up and boost and um, be okay because we know we're tuned up to about 20 PSI. So fueling should be good up through 20 PSI and we know that manifold air temps were okay. So that's not a, a concern for raising the boost. Um, air fuel ratios are okay, so that's not a concern. So what we need to do is raise the boost more and we need to get in that left lane and we need to make a good pass with a good 60 foot. Uh, we launched with some more boost that time. Let's see, where's the launch at? Launch was... Um, here's me trying to get up on the brake. Almost ready to leave. And here's me leaving right here. So you can see that right here I left on 13.3 pounds of boost, which is super respectable for me, for what I'm doing here and trying to do. Leaving on 13 pounds of boost is A-OK. -okay. More is better. But I'll take 13 for tonight, or more if I can get it, or whatever. Uh, if I would have stuck traction, this would have been a really good pass. Um, so yeah, we just need to go raise the boost some more and get a good pass with no uh, no loss of traction. Here's my loss of traction right here. Right there, you can see I completely got out of uh, TPS, went down to almost zero, went down to three and a half because I let off the throttle and then immediately got right back into it, straightened it out, and drove it out the back end. So let's go do another one, more boost. Okay, my guys, so that was not a spectacular pass by any means. <clears throat> the uh, I had no traction right off the hit. I had to pedal it like four times, five times. So my 60 foot is embarrassing. Uh, everything's embarrassing until you get down to my quarter mile speed, 135, which is still not that great, but hey, it's faster than anything else I've done tonight. So that's the, that's the big story on this pass was we did go faster, uh, about a mile an hour faster would have been way faster than that had my 60 foot been okay so average boost throughout this run was about 18.9 so let's call it 19 psi on that run um so yeah running more boost and uh running more mile per hour both those things seem to go together i guess so everything looks normal and everything looks fine afrs are still good the average afr through that pass through most of second and third was 11.14 which I think is okay. It's probably not perfect, but it's good enough. Nothing's gonna blow up. Um, what else? What else do we want to talk about? Um, air temperature, 110 degrees, right there on that run. At that point in the run, let's see how how hot it got at the at the hottest here. 118 before I chopped it off. 119. So just exactly the same as a couple of runs ago. 119 degrees. This seems to be a basically 120 degree intercooler. 
at its worst. So I'm super, super, super happy about that. Not at all going to be a problem, um, I don't think. So everything looks fine. Um, yeah, so what do I need to do? What I need to do is figure out how to make this thing leave. Uh, well, speaking of the leave, how much boost did we leave on? We left on... We left on 11 and a half pounds of boost, basically, 11.5. So, yeah, I guess that's okay. I could have sat there a little longer and left a little more boost, but honestly, it's taken a long time to get up on the brake. Longer than it did back home on the street. I don't know why, but I'm having to sit here for all this much time right here. Boom, right there. So I go full throttle right here, it's at 62 seconds. So it takes from 62 seconds to uh, 72 seconds before I leave. So I'm sitting there for 10 freaking seconds. That's not great. Um, it only took about four seconds to get up on the chip at home. I don't know why on earth anything at all period would be different here at the track, but four seconds at home to 10 seconds here. What the heck? I don't know why that's happening. I really don't. Could be a tuning thing, I guess. Um, for sure, it could be. So maybe I've just got more work to do there. I don't really know. But I'll sit there for 10 seconds if I have to, I guess. Probably baking my transmission, but I don't know what else to do. To be honest with you, I'm about ready to put the BTR intake back on and put some nitrous on this car and make it freaking spool. It's going to be either that or send the converter back to PTC and have them loosen it up. Um, and to be quite honest, it needs to be looser in the top end anyway, if you ask me, because let's look at the RPM on the shift. So we're in second gear, we shift to third, we max out at 7200 RPM. And then, you know, by the time it actually shifts, it, it has revved up to 72 and then it drops down to 50 freaking four. So 72 to 54, that's too much RPM drop. Most guys don't want that much drop. Maybe a thousand RPM would be good. So I think it needs to be looser up top and looser down low. Sorry, kind of loud. So I'm kind of speaking out of my backside here because I don't know that much about this stuff. But uh, from what I do understand, uh, looser down low would help me get on the trans brake faster and. Looser down low is going to equal also looser up top, which is going to fix this RPM drop. Um, so I think a looser converter would absolutely help me on both ends of the racetrack. So we'll see if I do that. Anyway, that's how that pass went. Basically, I'm happy. The car's really working sort of well. The chassis is not, but the engine is. Uh, transmission seems happy, and it's going faster as I race boost, so it's healthy and happy. So those are all wins for me. Um, it's taken me a long time to get to the point where I could just get the car to kind of work. Um, oh, what we were going to talk about, or what I wanted to talk about was timing retard after the launch. Uh, if you go to advanced engine, down here to timing retard after launch, you can see that uh, according to this, it's set up to pull 8 degrees as soon as I launch. So as soon as I get off the two-step and the car launches, it pulls 8 degrees, and then it puts that 8 degrees back in over 3 seconds. Um, that might be why I'm losing traction. On my fastest pass ever, my tuner had this set out to, to do this kind of a drop, but spread way out over, I think over here or something. So maybe I've got the timing coming back in too fast. So I might play with that tonight if I have time, we'll see. Anyway, that's where we're at. Okay guys, so that was my uh, most recent pass here, my last pass. My 60 foot was not great at 175. Uh, but it felt way better. I did lose traction and have to pedal it one time that time instead of like four times previous time uh, Eighth mile still a 7.0 Quarter mile 10.6. So I think that's my fastest quarter mile of the night 136 mile per hour fastest speed of the night So, you know, we're getting a little bit faster on all regards more or less here. So that's good um, Average boost on that run was 19.2 psi. So I got a couple of pounds more I can add on boost uh, the real story of the night though is turning into one of my 60 foot. 60 foot is the real story of the night here. If I could have knocked that down to a 1.5, which I have done in the past, I uh, would have been 2 tenths off there, which would have been 4 tenths off here, which would have been that. That means that would have 10.6 would have been a 10.2. A um, and that would be fairly decent. Of course, I've been a 9.8 before, so 10.2 is not as good as a 9.8, so why am I not running 9.8s instead of 
a best of a 10-2, theoretical best. I have no idea. Um, maybe I just need more boost or something. Or maybe my timing is a little different this time than it was on my fastest ever run last year. Definitely could be that. In fact, I'm almost, now that I say it, I'm almost 110% 10 certain my timing is less now than it was last year. I think last year when I ran my 980 at 140 and lifted ahead, I think my tuner went in and pulled a few degrees out of timing on the top end. Tuners are notorious for doing that, and they don't they won't tell you either. Uh, you'll go to the dyno, you'll make a big hero run, you'll make 800 horsepower, and then they'll pull a couple degrees out and then give you the car back and not tell you they did it. And it's because they want the car to last and to hold together and to live. And they know that you're not going to know the difference between 800 horsepower and 750. So, so they give you the car back with 750-ish horsepower instead of 800 and your car lasts forever and you're happy. And you got a big hero dyno chart that says 800 horsepower that you can share with all your buddies. So I understand why they do it. Um, so anyway, Scott, if you're watching, I'm sure you pulled some timing out of this since my big run last year. And thank you for doing that, man. You're the man. You know what you're doing. So that probably explains why uh, essentially 20 PSI this year is not running 143 miles an hour, whereas uh, this year almost 20 PSI is running 136 mile an hour. Um, so that's cool, no problem. We can always add more timing or add more boost or do whatever is needed. Um, of course, if you add more timing, you risk lifting ahead again. But I've got better head studs, better head gaskets, and I've got better head studs, better head gaskets, and better machine work. So the motor's going to last uh, theoretically longer and handle more, more boost and timing and power this year. So, anyway. Bottom line is, things are going really great. I'm really happy. The car is progressing really, really well. I just need to get a killer 60 foot. So I think really, probably I could go make another pass with that and add more boost. Um, and it'll probably mile per hour a little higher, but it's not going to 60 foot much better unless I just get lucky. So I think we're probably at the point where it's time to start thinking about how to make this car 60 foot really, really well. Got a couple tricks up my sleeve there. One is just lowering tire pressure, the obvious, simple, quick, and easy thing anybody can do. The other is uh, some GK Tech suspension uh, brackets that I'm gonna install in the car, which I bought a long time ago and have sitting on the shelf. So it's probably time to install those, and that's gonna help me have better, uh, basically, I think it's gonna help me have better camber on the squat. Also, I have a bunch of uh, suspension adjustment that I can work on. Um, so, I think we're uh, more or less at the point where we need a much better 60 foot um, to go a lot faster. We can continue adding boost and boost and boost, but it just kind of punishes the motor. If you're not 60 footing well, why punish the motor on the top end? You're just kind of going about it backwards. So, I honestly think I'm just going to stop there for tonight. It's kind of late. so. Uh, I think that's going to be my last pass. Best pass of the night, 10-6 at 136. So I'm really happy with that and uh, really encouraged by the car and the progress that we've made here. Uh, I did exactly what I wanted to do tonight, which was come out and run consistent 10s. And sure enough, I ran 10s all night long. So very, very happy with that. So anyway, guys, appreciate you watching the video and hanging in there with me here on the project and following along. And uh, I will catch you guys on the next one.